Hello everybody, Louis here and let's talk C Sharp. So in this video, we'll talk about if statements. So what are if statements? Um, if statements are a kind of control structure that you have in programming languages that will allow you to run or not run a piece of code depending on the occurrence or not occurrence of a condition, okay? Um, so essentially this is this is kind of a quick definition. So let's look at the code and then understand what that means, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to declare a variable. It's gonna be an integer variable and I'm gonna call it my number, okay? And I'm gonna say my number is equal to five, okay? So here's the syntax for if statements. You throw in the if keyword and, you know, Visual Studio actually recognizes that as a key word. And you notice that because it's actually pink, it's not blue as the other ones, right? Um, and then you have to throw in a pair of parentheses there and you are going to have a condition here. And we are gonna talk about what conditions are. Um, and you're gonna have to use your curly braces, okay? So good programming languages, they will all use curly braces. Um, so essentially this is, this. there are many forms in which uh, if statements come in, but this is the simplest one, okay? So you have your if statements, you have your condition, you have your curly braces, and your code goes here, okay? And this code will only run if the condition returns true, okay? So what does that mean? Um, so there's something in C-sharp, um, actually any programming language that we call comparison operators, all right? So comparison operators are equals, different than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or less than and equal to, all right? So what they do is, you know, they do what they say they do. So equals equals, uh, they actually assert whether uh, one thing is equal to the other, different than asserts whether something is different than something else or one thing is different than the other. Greater than uh, asserts whether one thing, typically one number, is greater than the other. Same for greater than or equal to. Less than and less than and equal to. Okay? So the last four, they actually do the same thing that you're used uh, to seeing in your math class. Okay? So you can use these comparison operators to come up with conditions, right? And the first condition that I'm gonna throw in here is that my number is greater than zero. Maybe I wanna test if it's a positive number, okay? So if this thing is true, then I can actually do something here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a console write line and I'm gonna say, I'm actually gonna add an interpolated string and throw in my number. We already know what string, uh, interpolated strings are. So my number is greater than zero, okay? So I've created a condition here and this condition, again, it's checking if my number is greater than zero, okay? So this statement, whatever goes in here, whatever goes, in the in my parentheses it has to be an expression that returns either true or false in other words it has to be a boolean expression okay and there are many ways that i can write a boolean expression um, and we're going to explore them in this course all right so this is one of those ways so i'm going to check if my number is greater than zero so let's run this code Yep, there you go, five is greater than zero, okay? So 
if I change this to minus five and run again, look at that. I see nothing. I get nothing on my console. And why is that? Well, that's because this piece of code, as it says in the comment, will only run if this condition is true. In this case, minus five is not greater than zero. So this will never run. And that's why I get nothing in my console, right? So now we can talk about the second form um, in which if statements come in, which is an if statement and an else statement, okay? So this code will only run if the first condition returns false, okay? And there's a reason why I'm calling it the first condition. It's going to make sense in a few minutes, all right? Um, so it's going to check, the code's going to check if my number is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, this is the code I'm going to run. If it's not greater than zero, this is the code I'm going to run. And what I'm going to say here is my number is not greater than zero. Okay, and if I run this again, I'm going to see that my output now changes to minus five is not greater than zero. So it does make sense. Look at that. Perfect. We're, we are making progress. Okay, so let's change this exercise a bit now. Let's, let's not work with numbers. I'm going to create a string variable. And I'm going to call this city. And city will be equal to Toronto. Okay, so let's work with this, these operators here now. So if city equals equals Toronto, then I'm going to run this code. Okay, and I'm going to say city is in Canada. Okay. For every other case, well, I don't know what other what the other possible cities are. Um, I can't really foresee all of the possible cases. So I'm just going to throw in one else statement. And I'm going to say I do not know of that city. Okay, so if I run this now, Toronto is in Canada. Okay, so if I change my city to say New York and run this, I do not know of that city. So the code is saying it does not know of that city because it has not been coded to know about that city. So let's change that. So in order to do that, let's say we want we want our code to know about other cities, right? So for that, we can add something called an else if statement, which syntax is just like that, okay? So I can throw in another condition in here, okay? And this code will only run if the second condition returns true. Okay, so let's change this comment now because it does not make sense anymore. Uh, this code will run, will only run if none of the conditions above are satisfied. Okay. So we are throwing in a new condition here, and that condition will be city equals equals New York. Okay, and what do I want to do? So what I want to do here is say something like city is 
in the USA. And if I run this code, my code now knows that New York exists and it's in the USA. All right. So this is the third form in which if statements come in. Okay. So you have, you start with an if statement, you end with an else statement, and you're going to have else if statements in between, and you can have as many as you need. Okay. So if I were to change this and add, throw in another one and say, Los Angeles. Okay. So I can do the same thing, right? So this is another condition and this is the code that will run if the third condition is true. Okay. So this is the third form uh, in which if statements come in. Okay. And if I run this, if I change this to say Los Angeles and run this, my code works. Okay. Now there is one last form, the fourth and last form in which if statements come in. And, um, the fourth one is just, you know, there's no else statements. So you are actually allowed nowadays to have only if statements and else if statements, you don't necessarily have to close the, the whole thing with an else statement. Okay. So this is a possible uh, approach as well. For most cases, however, um, I think you can say that you will, uh, for the most part, uh, close your if statements with else statements, at least for the purposes of, you know, the kind of exercises that we're doing in this course. All right. So one, one last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is let's, let's go back to the second form and let's just have that. Okay. So what I want to talk to you about is that what if, let's say that you're collecting this input from the user, right? And maybe the user will type in Toronto just exactly like you typed in here. Okay. And in this case, if you run this code, you will get the output that you're looking for. Okay. However, what if the user types in all lowercase like that? Okay. So this is actually different than this right? Same thing if the user types in all uppercase like that. So these are actually different. Okay. So the computer does not understand these things as being the same thing. Okay. So what can you do in that case? Well, I think the best approach would be to use one of the, uh, to do some string manipulation, right? So we can call our to upper method to upper or to lower doesn't matter. It's up to you. Um, and we have another video talking about string manipulation and we cover the two upper and two lower methods. Um, so two upper and if you've watched that video, you know that the two upper method can be called from a string and it'll actually take that string and make it all uppercase for you. Okay. So it's going to return an all uppercase string, which can be that. Okay. So what I'm doing now is, uh, I essentially don't care anymore about casing. Okay. So my code is not case sensitive anymore. So I can actually do anything I want. So even if I type things like that and run this, I will actually get the output I'm looking for because I'm saying Toronto is in Canada and I don't care about casing. So, yeah, make sure you use your two upper or two lower methods when doing this kind of problem. Okay. So I think that's it for if statements. Um, they do get a little more complicated when we're, we're talking about, you know, if statements with multiple conditions, but we'll cover that some other time. Okay. So for this video, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.